Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's real late. It's one app. It's whatever version of this interview you're hearing. Um, it is Peter Rosenberg on real late. And my guy, Eric, the architect yeah. is here. Yes, sir. You mean for the first time in a long time in a long time. I don't know how long it's never been solo, right? Never, never, never been solo. By the way, he is a Flatbush zombie. For some reason, no, no. you're consuming this. You know, I, I, it's important to do this. When when I interview artists who are like, uh, for lack of a better word, niche, mm. it's like important to always reestablish who everybody is. I sort of take all these things for granted because it's my world, <laughs> which is ironic considering I know nothing about what the hell's going on in the other sects of hip hop. <laughs> you just happen to be in the sect that I still <laughs> that I still keep up with. By the way, how's your... How's your keeping up with like all things hip hop these days? I'm glad you asked me. I don't know what's going on either, bro. I'm gonna come clean. It's hard, right? Yeah, it's too much. And I'm not as interested as I used to be, to be honest. Like just to even just like look, like to just randomly somebody gotta like play it and I gotta be like, yo, who is that? And then you be put like all the stuff that's come out, I've really turned my brain off from listening to it. Bro, I don't wanna be this guy. I really either. don't like I don't either for so long. My life was kind of like, you know, I'm 44 now. So when I met you guys, I was like uh, I don't know, 32 or something, whatever it mm. was. Right. How long y'all been out? More than 10 years, probably 12 years, probably 12 years. Right. Yeah. So at that time I was all, and how old are you now? 35, 35. Right. So at, 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 at you're getting you're already into the time of life where you'll have friends who are like, yeah, I don't even really keep up with stuff anymore. <laughs> like, they may know your stuff. They may not even know your stuff. Like, Facts. they used to be heads, right? Yeah. And for so long, those those friends of mine who faded, I, like, looked down at them like, mm. y'all are whack. You don't love hip-hop as much as I do. Yeah. You did, but now you don't have time for it. And now I look up and I'm like, I don't have the effort. Like, I'm not feeling compelled. I thought it was just me, bro. I thought it was just me. But by the way, this is recent. This isn't even like nah, this ain't five like years, years ago. Yeah, no, no this not. is in the last couple of, not even since it went sing-songy necessarily. Because nah, people not, will say nah, it's nah, just nah. since then. Mm -mm. I was still interested. I'll put it this way. When Yachty came out, mm -hmm. I was still interested. Like For I was sure. like, oh, I want to know about this kid. He seems, and by the way, I was right. Many people were. He, many people were wrong, though. Turned out to be an exceptionally talented kid who does different kinds of stuff. Tracks. But now here we are, and I'm like, yo, thank God for the the Eric the Architect. Tell him the name of your album, by the way, which is fantastic. My name of my album is I've Never Been Here Before. And what, is, what does that refer to, I've Never Been Here Before? So the surface definition is clearly like, okay, I've never released a debut album before. But it's really just a testament to be like, yo, I lost so much over the past five years in the course of my life, just losing and the anxiety built around losing your keys and your phone. I'm like, there is actually good loss where you can lose something and actually benefit from the you not being distracted by it anymore or it being a bad habit. So this is my first time really feeling like it's actually okay to lose some shit because I'm benefiting from it not being around me. See, now you're, now you're talking that talk already. Let's, let's talk about, cause when you said loss, I assume you immediately meant like serious loss, mm, a mixture of that. And so I, there's some of that too. Yeah. So, okay. Let, so let's start. What, what, what was there one particular serious loss that you went through in the last five years? My mom's. Wow. What, when was that? That was four years ago. Well, that that's about as serious as it gets. Mm -hmm. So, what was that? What was that process like for you? I mean, for me, bro, like that was something. Sudden? Nah, it was it was weird. I mean, every time you've ever seen us, or you know, we did a show in the back of my mind, I was thinking about my mom's. I just didn't. I had to just like do what I had to do because she wasn't in a great place nah like my mom was blind so I had a lot of um you know diabetes just it's a kind of disease that it starts as one thing and then it gets worse and worse over time and as much as I didn't want to accept that it was hard for me to ignore it because I can't it's my mom you know and then um you know I feel like dealing with something like that on a regular basis bro it, it's it was a distraction in a way that she didn't want it to be to me you know it's like oh don't worry about it go Go hang out with your boys. And I'm like, damn, I want to chill. I want to watch Amos and Andy and shit. Like, I want to watch Martin and shit with you, you know? And then eventually, you know, as her uh, health started to decline, I had to accept that this is probably going to happen. But thank God we were all together. Um, like, all my brothers, my dad. How many s siblings do you have? I have two. Okay. So, you know, that was the initial And your parents thing. are married? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I, have, I was always around my family. Um, 
But that was the initial reason why I kind of got up and left here. Um, mainly because I was just like, yo, everything reminds me of her. And I had an opportunity to buy a house. Um, so I did that. And I just started something fresh. In L.A.? Yeah. So you went to L.A. after your mom passed? mm mm-hmm. um, And did it feel good to be someplace so far away? And, and were Juice and Meech there also at that point? Or did you go out there solo? So I technically was leaving first, but... Juice beat me to it. Juice already had an apartment that he was like, okay, well, if you're going to go, I'm going to go. So I'm going to I'm gonna go now. And I was like, damn, bro, I didn't even, I, I got my suitcase is still in Brooklyn and shit. He's like, nah, I'm out. So he left, and then I think, then I had got there, and then Juice, and Meech came, I think, a year after we both lived there. So did you feel alone being out there, or did you pretty quickly feel like? It's weird, bro. I like being alone sometimes. I'm a weird guy, bro. Sometimes I like that, that solace and that space of, uh, recreation and I, I I not to not some cliche corny shit but like a rebrand you know when you go to a new school that's what it felt like in a way it's like this is your time to be like who am I really you know and when you bro honestly when you lose your mom you realize how much you you, you realize how much you are your uh, mom's son but you also say damn I really gotta do what it, I gotta do I gotta live my dreams for real you know like if if that doesn't hit you at that moment, I don't really know if it ever will because it's so shocking that you have to kick into this other mode. It has to either motivate you or it's going to hurt you. And I would refuse to let it be something that was going to hold me down, you know? Isn't it crazy that, like, uh, I, I'm very fortunate. My my parents are both still around. And as oh, I God said, bless I'm, them. Yeah, mm-hmm. my, they're both in their uh, mid, mid late 70s and both doing pretty good. Over the last... Uh, you know, a couple of years, they've started to finally seem a bit older, um, which I know I f- I'm very blessed to even be saying that when they're at the age they're at. But like my For mom sure. just had knee surgery, you know, like my dad forgets that like I'll I'll get <laughs> legitimately dad mad at my dad for like not remembering Dave Chappelle's name. Like, especially because he talks about him all the time. He's like, my dad has it's been like, so, his name? my dad's been so annoyed with Dave Chappelle for two years straight. All he wants to do is talk shit about him. And I have to remind him of his name every like, time. What's that guy I hate? Oh, so that is what you just said was a literal quote. <laughs> who's, the, who's the comedian I hate? I was like, Dave Chappelle. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, and, but like, so little stuff like that. Right. And so I've been very blessed. Mm-hmm. What's amazing for me to see from. Other people's, my, my, my dear friend Jody lost his mom a few years ago. Mm. Flex years ago lost his mom. Ebro lost his mom very suddenly. He was mm. in the middle of an interview at Apple oh, and man. got a phone call that his mom, was who's in Vegas, she lives in Vegas, oh, had, was in bad, a bad way. And when he got there, she had passed. Oh. And I watched them get affected by it. And I, what I'm trying to say is it's amazing that it's part of the natural order of life. And yet when I see it happen to people and I dread the day for myself, you see people change forever. And you're like, damn, everyone goes. If you're lucky, you go through this. It's very true. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Because the biggest nightmare is it goes the other way. Oh, yeah. So if you're lucky, it goes this way. Yeah. And everyone is impacted in this just huge way. How, how old was your mom? She'll be 70 this year. So she, she was young. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if it was... 80 it still hits it like to not have your uh, a parent and then i've heard you know ebro talks about this uh you know the craziness of when his mom was his second parent to go oh so the feeling of when you have no parents parents, left yeah that's another that's another thing of like wait so i'm the i'm the adult Mm -hmm. i'm the it doesn't get any (laughs) i can't call anyone above me yeah bro all of that hits you like immediately because then you looking at old texts you got like all these memories, bro. So what was your, did you, so you, did you like go through everything? Did you like do the like searching for emails and texts and. Oh yeah. I'm still doing that kind of shit. You know, like I got a phone that just has all the uh, old voicemails that she left me. Cause my mom was funny as shit, bro. You know, being blind, it, it's really showed me that people who don't know how to be around somebody that has a disability, like that's the majority of the world. Yeah. Most people talk to them like this. They hate that shit. Stop talking to them like that. They want you to be like, so The Rock is, the, they, don't, they want you to talk about whatever the fuck is cool. Like, right. Fast and the Furious sucks. They want to hear that. They don't want you to say, hey, you know what? 
Um, is she okay? Does she know about that move? It's like, well, she's not. She her brain is intact. Yeah, she just she's, can't see. She can't see. And Ooh. it's the deaf and the blind community too, because they both like Helen Keller. That's why I used to take her. You know, so they both in the same area. Um, because they both, well, Helen Keller's a school. I mean, yeah, obviously, I know who the for, person is but for the blind. That's the school for the blind. Yeah. So she uh, to learn Braille. But she was deaf and blind. No, no, no. But like. A lot of times they're in these centers, they're together, but they're, not in the same room. But in this one, it's, not in the same room. Okay. Right, exactly. So, like, I've seen it happen to people who are blind and deaf. The way that people treat them, they baby them, but there's a constant reminder that they're sick and they hate that shit. So, the and they've already that, been through, so they've already, their skill set is so sharp. Their sword's already so sharp. Bro, they see better than us. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, that shit is so cerebral, you wouldn't even realize. Like, these. Uh, you know, AK from the Underachievers, mm -hmm. my mom described what he looked like to me. She said, he's tall and light skinned with um, a big lips. I was like, how the fuck did you know that? She said, his voice. I was like, what? Like, how the fuck did you do that? She described what he looked like. How long, how long was she blind? Bro, she was blind when I was in high school. So like, I don't know. Uh, I was probably like 14. So yeah, like, so yeah, for the, for the last 20 Mm -hmm. Years of her life. Yeah. Something like that. Or close to it. Mm -hmm. That was just one of the complications. That just like. Can't, that from, from diabetes. From diabetes. But she had kidney failure too later. So those are the things, bro, that I was dealing with for quite a bit. And I'm not the type of person to be like, woe is me. Because everybody has their, uh, their, their vice or their thing that they have to kind of like focus on and shit. But for me, it was. It's your mom's, bro. Like, so it was always bothering me. And, um. But she was so influential to my life, um, as every mother should be. But because she couldn't see, it was like a different level of like explanation with the things that I did that I want to make sure somebody like her can understand what's really happening in the world, which is why I really want to make music, because it's so much involved in that with somebody can't see. Like they have so much more attention to texture and mixing and all that kind of shit. You know, what she think of your music? <laughs> so the Flavor Zombies music. She was like, man, those guys are crazy. And I'll be like, well, I'm in it too. She goes, yeah, but like, you know, they're a different kind of crazy. You're crazy because you can, because you don't do those things. She don't ever ask me if I did acid or LSD. She just knew. Because um, they I, talk about it. Right. She was just like, I know you don't do it, but that's why you're crazy. Because, you know, all these people probably think you do and you don't care. I was like, yeah, I mean, what do you want me to do? Like, Is that true? Do you never do it? Nah. Um, at this point, I've, I, I've tried different things, but like. The whole Flabber Zombies time of releasing all those albums, I was completely just smoking weed, for sure. Got it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um. So what she so she thought it was crazy, but it wasn't for her. No, she fucked with it. And you know what's funny? The funniest shit that the song she liked the most. I said, "What's your favorite song?" She said, "That one where you go fuck money, fuck man, fuck 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 fuck." I was like, "You like the most aggressive raw Flabber Zombie song?" I said, "Why do you like that song?" She said, "Cause fuck that. That's why." I was like. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing, man. So that's my mom's in a nutshell, you know what I mean? What's your mom's, what, what's her name? Denise. Denise what? Elliot. Denise Elliot. I guess that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, rest in peace, Denise Elliot. For sure. Um, so so that's the major loss. Yeah. But then you were saying, like, you lost other things. Yeah. What are what are some of the vices that you accidentally or intentionally lost? Um, I don't smoke weed. You're out on weed. For how long? Since, it's about to be a year almost. Okay. Um, I have a new relationship, which I ended my previous relationship. That was like really long. Um, how long have you been in? How long had you been in a relationship? Nine years. Nine joints. Yeah. So there. And that, that all ha that all ended after your mom. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, I think by being a homeowner and buying a house is a different kind of game, but you lose, like you said, like you don't have beef patties up the block no more. You don't have your brother. To to come and fix your sink for you and shit. You have to learn all that stuff. So you're gaining this other new thing, but you're losing your family. You're, you, I'm losing like my immediate friend circle, mm -hmm. coming into a new city where I can't drive or swim. You know, those are losses and gains in a way. Well, you could drive. You don't have a car. You don't have a license? I don't have a license. Oh, uh, never had one. Never. Real New Yorker. New York shit, man. Come on, man. Like, do, do either Meech or Juice drive? Hell no. Ju Meech can drive. Me and Meech can drive. I don't know if Juice will get a car. I can't. You know, it's interesting. If I were to guess, I would have had Juice as the least likely at driving. Yeah. I don't know why. Can't hard for me to picture. 
Juice is the worst vision of us three. That's why I said that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he has to wear his glasses. He can't see anything without his glasses. Yo, it, it's it, it's so funny because you were just talking about uh, your mom and obviously vision, and I just got glasses two weeks ago oh, at four in my mid forties. Was it like one of those moments you're like, damn, I'm getting old? Oh uh, yeah, a bit. They and fit you though. Thank like, you. Yeah. Oh, I I I didn't know how much I couldn't see. I know that I went and did, you wouldn't know this because you don't have a license, but <laughs> when you go to, <laughs> when you go to renew your license, you do like this bullshit. You don't have to like go to the DMV. You can go to like a pharmacy or whatever and do the bullshit uh, vision, vision test, test. And they'll just like, you know, you can fax it over or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I went to go do that like a year ago, I felt myself barely passing it and it was oh. bullshit. Like it's not a, it's not a hard test. Mm -hmm. They'll give anyone a license, which is crazy. And I felt myself struggling. Squinting and shit. Yeah. yeah. And so then as time went on, I just noticed like things weren't as sharp driving at night. Like the exit signs on the turnpike, it would be like, I'd have to get closer to see to things. See like it. Damn. So mm -hmm. Natalie and I were, uh, we're at the Gucci store and I just saw these glasses mm. and I, I put them on for fun. Okay. She was like, those look really good on you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know what? Say less. I'm getting these. <laughs> okay. And once I had frames, I liked mm. that was the motivation mm. that I'm like, all right, now I'm going to go to a doctor and see what's up. That's and I fire. went, I went to them. They were like, you have a terrible uh, stigma. You got stigmatism. Stigmatism. I got one too. And this eye. Yeah, it's, and I don't even know what it means. I don't understand it. I think your eyeball is shaped differently. Yeah, it's it's the shape of it, but so like, like an oval, not a circle yeah. or some shit so like that. So she was like, you have a really big stigmatism, and like basically I'm nearsighted and farsighted. Like I, so oh, so these wow. are progressives. I jumped right into the, wow. I got three different visions. <laughs> yeah. I got crazy visions, son. <laughs> yeah, and I'm so I'm learning how to like, oh, shit. I have to turn because if I go like this, if I, try, if I just look, you can't look side to side or down with your eyeballs with these. Mm. You have to turn where you want to be looking where you, you might look. catch blurry. Mm. Anyways, it, it's just wow. one of those things that I hadn't ever thought about. And in doing it, I noticed that like, I thought it was a really interesting experience that I'd never heard another person talk about. Like, I'm like no one's ever told me like, hey, it's weird getting glasses. You put them on. Yo, the day, do you, have, do you wear them at all? Yeah. So what do you have? What's your, what's your situation? Uh, I can't see shit up close. You can't see shit. So if people are like, yo, look at this, I got to like back up. Like, yo, so yeah. your glasses are then for like your phone and stuff? Yeah. So you can hold your phone regular phone, and not have to go like right. this. Phone and like laptop. If I'm on a computer a long time, I'll do you, it. You put them on. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know if you had this experience, but like the second I got the glasses, once I then take them off, oh, the shit realize. is blurrier than it ever. Yeah. Then if I wait another, like I'll close my eyes for like another 10 seconds. When I reopen them, it starts to feel like what it used to feel, feel like, like pre-glasses. Yeah. But when I first take them off, yeah, it's weird I, as fuck. I, I can't see shit. Yeah, yeah. That happened and then I'm too. like, wait a second. Are these making me more blind? <laughs> you know? And I get why people think that because you get used to it, right? Yeah, you get used to it. Then you realize how fucked up your vision really is. Yeah. And then here's the craziest part. The whole stupid myth of like glasses like look smarter it works on me. I actually feel smarter with my glasses. I do. I'll see myself on screen. I'll say, I'm smart. I'll be bro. like, yo, I do look smart up there. <laughs> like I'm just as dumb as I was, but I swear when I see me, I would take me more seriously right now. But if they weren't Gucci, if they were like CVS shades, you think you would still look smarter? I might look even smarter. Mm. Honestly, it could be even you might smarter. Be right. You might be right. Because you the, might let's be, be honest. Right. Low key, low key, low the key. smartest people in the world, and beyond, they're not wearing Gucci <laughs> frames. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's inherently dumb to spend money on Gucci frames. Like, right? I'm never going to buy that. Right, right. I'm they smart. Would, they get their shit at the CVS. Right. What, 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 what glasses can I get these in? And they walk out. <laughs> yeah. You know all the rich people you see? Whenever you really... Right. Yo, LA is the worst, too, because you see so many people who are rich on different levels. Like, mm -hmm. yo, bro, you, you like... You're you're a fashionista of sorts. I'm okay. sure you've had. I'm sure you've it, had. A, I'm sure you've bought yourself a, a nice item before. Okay, a piece of clothing that you spent some cash on. You okay, I'm I'm flying. This is dope. Oh mm -hmm. wow! And then like you'll go out to a random Laker game, mm. and there's just like nondescript L.A. people wearing the most outrageous shit, and you're like, I get angry. I'm like, who the fuck do you think you and are? And the thing is, they can't even wear layers because it's too hot most of the time. So bro, it's like, it's just weird. Like I saw Celebro the other day. The NBA posted Celebro at the Lakers game. Everyone was trying to wear these big-ass jackets. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a, you're reaching right yeah. now. 
Um, so, so, so among the things that you lost, mm. the, the other things, you, you made it sound like some were habits too. Like, did you change, you, weed? One. Weed. I would say my diet changed too. I gained a lot of weight. In a, um, in a good way? In a good way. I feel like it's healthy weight. I feel like I'm 6'3". I should be over 200 pounds. I was yeah. definitely under 200 pounds, which means that I probably was a little of the D word, a little depressed, yeah. maybe a little bit, just not eating and not focusing on um, my nutrition. You know, I do a little yoga now. That's a new habit. That's a good one. You know? How often are we yoga yoga in? I try to do now once a week. Okay. Yep. Get your little stretch on. My you do hot stretch. yoga or regular? Regular. All right. Yep. I have a yoga mat now behind my <sighs> my uh, couch. Look at you. Yeah, you know. Come on now. When you start getting up there, if you can't touch your toes, bro, you can say pause or whatever. That's not good, bro. Nah, man. It's it's so fast. It's not good for you, bro. You don't want to get to a place where, like, like I'll, I'll say this right now to people listening to the show. If you be realistic for yourself, if it's been a while since you've been in the gym or anything, like, do you think you can comfortably go sit on the floor if you have to and get back up off the floor? Like, that's a small Indian thing. Indian style, too? Like, you get, down, you get down, cross your legs. And you, I'm not saying you have to be able to push yourself up from the seated position. I, I don't, I've never been able to do that well. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm just saying to be able to, like, literally be on the floor if you have to. Because it's something you take for granted. For sure. But, like, I was in the gym the other day in my building, and my next-door neighbor, Dave, he's probably... Natalie's in the other room, but she doesn't have a microphone. I got to give you a microphone, babe. I, I, would, I would guess Dave is like 75, something like that. And he was at the gym the other day. And in addition to all his other workouts, I was just impressed when I saw him get down on the floor and, and he was stretching. And I'm like, I don't know how well my parents would do trying to get down on the floor and get back up in their mm -hmm. 70s. That might be a wrap. And there are people out there right now in their 30s and 40s who let it, let it get away from them. That's a fact. And like, hey, if you can't, get up and like it's already bad enough that when you get to a certain age you always feel like you're one quick step away from an injury <laughs> have you had that move yet have you had the yes. moment where you bend over quick what? and you, you feel that pinch in the you're lower like, back oh, oh shit whoa, 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 whoa. yo especially basketball i used to just like not have to stretch like if i don't stretch my shins are gonna be on fire the next day like my Bruh. whole shit is just fucked up my I, i've told this story before i don't know if on on the podcast but i've told this before but when i i, I in 2017 i played in the nba uh celebrity game obviously it was a bad <laughs> Actually, year i remember that. that it was hot i hit a shot everybody saw it everyone who knows me saw y'all saw what time it was <laughs> so in the lead up to that game at that point i'd been living in new york for like 10 years okay i i've never played basketball in new york like, i'm gonna be honest of all the things that i was ready to brave about new york Rolling up to like West Forth with a ball was oh, not one of them. Wow. I it's not in my. I played in Maryland and I just never felt comfortable rolling up. And so as the years went on in New York, with very rare exceptions, did I ever pick up a basketball? Mm. So it's been ten years at the time. I'm 37 now. Mm. It's the difference between last playing in my late 20s and now wow. it's my late 30s. <sighs> so I get out there and my man, shout out to my man Jeff Sanchez from the NBA. Jeff Jeff is like, oh, I know some people have a pickup game. Um, it's a good run. You know, you should go You should go hit it leading up to the game. So I started hitting this run. And the first time I, I went out there and played, and, and I was fatter. Like, I look different than I look now. It was a different era for me, period. But <laughs> I, I get out there. My shit was on. My Achilles were on fire. Cooked. F I've never felt it though. Have you ever had your Achilles on be on oh, fire yeah. before? Oh yeah. So I never had that. I, yeah, I, you're like, I what the fuck is that? So yeah. afterwards, I'm like, oh my god, like this is a weird feeling. What the fuck? So I go to a doctor, mm. and I'm like, I've never had a thing like this, and he's like, oh, you're. He checked them out, and he was like, there's nothing wrong with them. You're old, and you need to wear a brace, oh. or you're gonna blow your shit out. Is what's gonna shit. happen? Yeah. He was like, so when you play. Under your socks, you know, you got to throw on an ankle brace. That's just, that's how it's going to be. Hey. And I was like, bro, if I hadn't done that, and I tried to get cute at the celebrity game and blew my Achilles out. In front of all those people, bro, bro you'd have been sick. <laughs> I don't think I ever could have recovered. You couldn't live that down. It happened to someone a couple years ago, an Achilles oh, or an ACL. No, nah, you can't do that, bro. Nah, bro, you better, go, you better go get your checkup before you go to play these games, no, you, bro. I'm bro, telling you, in your, and now in my 40s, Ooh. I'd be even... I don't know what I play. The only sport I'll play now um, would be like I'll play in a charity softball game. And okay. by the way, even that, 
The running, too, on that. Because you naturally, after you make contact, and by the way, all I do is ground out. I've played like eight of these games. I swear to you, I've grounded out almost every single time. But you, you, you instinctively, when you make contact, really try to take off. And that's when you can tear your whole shit. Oh, yeah, that first move, That first too, step. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> God forbid someone chase you down God. the street and you really be on the run. Right? I, See? So, so um, you're doing yoga. Yeah, yeah. You're not smoking weed. Not smoking how's your weed. How's your like social media phone interaction game? I, Bro, I struggle there a lot. I this is the most popular I've been as by myself, and I don't. I have. I just feel like the phone is like it's just poison sometimes. Like everybody's reminded. Like, look, bro. I've been saying this a lot. I don't post pictures. Of, I'm I'm not that vain. We all have some vanity, but like I won't post a picture where I look like shit on the internet. Right. But sometimes I look like shit. It's times when you look like shit, you know? It's just the way life is. We don't post those pictures on the internet. So imagine how many people are looking at themselves every day looking amazing, you know? Exactly. And we're all seeing that version of each other all the time. Girls, guys, animals. Yep. We're, all we're looking at is, like, perfect versions of everybody's life. It's so fucking, it's so fucking weird. And there's people just like, oh, man, I wish that was me. This person never looks like this. And never. then on top of that, they have a filter. And then you're like, Jesus Christ, my skin, oh, man. Drop that skincare routine, sis. And it's like, her skin is not always <laughs> like that. Today is lit. That's why I took the picture. But imagine what that's doing to us, like, all day, like, nonstop doing that shit. It, it, I feel it's a distraction as well. That's why. Why don't I see you? Fuck, like, man. I don't know. I, but I follow you, and I don't feel like you're in my algorithm at all. I'm it's sorry. Probably, it's probably from this bullshit, bro. It's no, I'm going I'm, I'm to just look through all your stories right now and click on a bunch of your shit. Where I, I think I've been I following you or, for years. No, I don't care. I mean. Here's a nice smile. Look at you. See? Look at you doing some street marketing. Street marketing. Concert. That's what I, you know I mean. Now, by the way, you and I could be a really good test to, for our own egos. You have 335,000 followers now. I have 334,000 followers. We could we could really check in in like five years. Like, see who we at. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to tell you something right now. And I'm guessing you've had some pretty good social media growth over the last couple of years, right? For sure. That, that would be my assumption. Mm-hmm. I, that shit too will kill you. So not only are you dealing with comparing yourself and when I got into my therapy, when I got serious, I did 12 step and mm. got in, I'd always been in therapy, but when I got in 12 step, it's a different kind of therapy. And I started like talk, thinking about things in a different way. Uh, I don't remember who said it to me for the first time, but when someone said to me, I think it was my, I think it was my therapist, Paul, he said, stop comparing your inside to other people's outside. I was like, yo. That's a bar. It's a real bar. And that's like an actual bar. Wow. Not like a TikTok video pretend bar. Nah, that's it's like blank. we really, because here's the thing. When I go on IG mm. and I see what people are posting, those things that you just described, like l- let me get your skincare regimen, sis. I'm comparing that to who I am, like at For my sure. core. For sure. But I don't know what. Yeah, you, it's not on the other end. It's not like you're seeing them for the inside. You're seeing the outside only. Right? I, I said something on the podcast once, and some of our listeners in Discord, because, again, social media is toxic, and I shouldn't look at it, but there are <laughs> beloved Discord <laughs> listeners, so I, I have to love them. I don't consider Discord social media. And No, no, it's not. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's, community based. it's funny. You think of a chat room now. It's like a completely different. It's yeah. so much healthier oh, yeah. relative to that. But, no, no, they. it wasn't even in the Discord. It, I don't remember who said it. But uh, so it was it was probably an IG comment. It mm-hmm. was an IG comment. It, it was not be. my Discord. It gotta be. So I I said on on the podcast to Saif at some point a while ago. I said one of the things I hate about social media is that it will make me feel like I'm not rooting for people I root for, mm-hmm. like actually people I like. Mm-hmm. I will instinctively have a moment where I'm hating. Mm. Because that's just how it uh, can affect me, mm. and like some, some, then like I said, some some nasty person on social media thought I was like such a horrible person for saying this, and I'm like, no, I'm being real with you about mm. what this device can make me feel. Mm. Like I have specific people in my mind who I love, I root for them. If they called and told me something good happened, mm-hmm. I'd be like, wow, really? Tell me more. I would care, but yet it may come up on my timeline in such a way, and you're like. Exactly, <laughs> man. Please, T- tired of your bullshit. Especially I'm if you just posted the same shit yesterday. It's just like, but I get it. I get, I get it. it. Yeah, but it's and fucked up that it got to be that. Be, it got it's, 
it's we're conditioned to like not it, how can I explain it? It's almost like I'm I want to see what I want to see on my phone, right? And then the, that's based on like you just said, we've been following each other for years, but I don't pop up on your shit. Maybe it's like for whatever reason, the thing that I want to see right now is not showing up. So guess what? I don't like any of it, you know? Like, Bro. I don't like any of this. And it's like, yo, this is your, yo, this is your cousin. Fuck my cousin. It's like all these people. Because you didn't see what you wanted to see. You wanted to see uh, the new Tesla model. And this shit didn't pop up on your shit. Or it's like you want to see just Nick Sports, which I'm all my speed, all my feed right now is all Nick shit. Cause I'm right, because they're playing well this season. You know? But you, you, you're following, this is where you're at. But like those shits, I'm getting all the likes and comments and I'm in the comments. But if it's somebody, it could be your boy's new song. You don't hate him. It's just that at this moment, you don't want to see that. Like, and it's by chance. It's not like it's an order for something that you enjoy. It's it's randomized. But, but because, I'm a, because I'm a sick, uh, uh, damaged person, <laughs> I, I will look at, not always. I'm not that sick, but <laughs> occasionally, a couple times a week, maybe. Okay. I will look at who liked my post. Oh, I've I'll, never done that. Yeah, you're, you're not as sick as me. Whoa. Yeah, no. There's levels wait, to this. Wait. There's <laughs> levels to de- there's levels to this depravity. You've never you've never clicked on nah, bro. So, so if, where you could see who liked it. Yeah. And then you could see you could search if the person didn't like it. Oh, you could search too. I don't even mean that, but like, oh. let's say it says, let's say a reel. Let's say I'm like, oh, this reel did really well. Uh, it got 50,000 views, 100,000 views, whatever. If I then go click on that number, mm-hmm. it will then show you the list of likes. Oh, yeah. I don't ever and, click that. And at the top of that list will be the people that you follow. Oh, shit. Really? So you see which people you follow. That liked it. That liked it. So like my wife, Miss Haddon, she's always at the top. I'll be like, oh, there's Natalie. Oh, there's my dad. And and to your point, maybe it's about algorithms. Sometimes I'm like, yo. A lot of people that I fuck with just don't like anything that I post. And they're like, well, they, do they even see anything that I post? That's what it usually is, bro. It'd be, they'll come up something, especially when you say buy now or tickets in. You might not see that shit for like a week. Yeah. It's just crazy. Like, it's just, I think it Well, how it fucked up is it when you promote something? That's what how, I mean. How little love it gets. Yeah. It's yeah. always less. Specifically, yeah, like if you, you put nerf up. nerf your post when you do that. You, exactly. Mm-hmm. So like. I mean, I'm sure when you make a big announcement, like when you announced your album, I'm sure. sure it got tons of engagement. But then when it came, when it comes to the more specific promotion, mm-hmm. it just goes down. Yeah. It's fucked up. They it's just keep you up. constantly searching for for more. Bro, it's a validation that you get from looking at those numbers and you get this little endorphin shot every time you, you click Bro, it. that's so... Do you think there's a possibility we could get to a point in time where people consider the like phone and internet and social media sort of like smoking where it's like you wouldn't let a kid do that like that's just mm. not done because we are fucking these kids up bro. it can be and you know wh- why i think that because this year is the first year that i've seen people openly be like i'm not drinking and i was like oh shit it was like a i don't know if it's a trend or on tiktok because i don't really be fucking with it but mad because i stopped for a little while too or i just have wine like i don't really drink hard shit no more either but when i did it i'm not saying because i did it but you that saw was it. my yeah. I was like, damn, is this popping up on my feet? Cause I'm blah blah blah. But Mad People was like, this week, I'm off of it. And then you're like, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna just do it for a month. And then he's like, yo, alcohol free, mocktail, mocktail life. And I'm like, oh, so, you know, damn. I mean, during COVID, it's probably when everybody was like, fuck it, I'm gonna drink, I'm gonna get fat, I'm gonna da da da. You come out of it, and then people are kind of more open minded, at least to a degree. And now I feel like four years into whatever we are now. People are starting to like notice that bad habits are not good and they're actually lame, you know, to be like, I'm going to be mad toxic and not care about myself and my body, you know, at least to me. But but when would we, it's it's such a conundrum <laughs> because in order to sort of get that way about our phones, we would have to see it on our phones. That's a fact. Like we're so deep in it. That's a fact. Like I, I, when I even think about, like I will think about getting a, one of these, like, you could get one of these, like, flip phones that kind of connects to your oh, I've iPhone. Seen those. You know what I mean? So you can leave your iPhone at home. It has home. no social media, but it has the ability to call or and shit. Yeah, it might have maps on it. They, mm-hmm. they, but, of course, as time went on, they started adding more and more. At first, it was just a phone. Then it was, like, phone and text message. <laughs> then it was, like, all right, phone, text message, map. Then it's, like, all right, let, we're going to put an MP3 player on here. But what it doesn't have is any social media. And I'll be honest, that's the biggest one. Like, mm-hmm. if you don't have TikTok, IG, X, whatever the fuck it is, if, they, if, if you don't have that, mm-hmm. like... I don't feel toxic feelings from looking at my text. No. 
No. Text is a di- text now, is different. I still probably text a lot and uh, you know, but it's communicating with people I care about. Like yeah. that's nobody I'm choosing to communicate, to communicate with you. either business or personal. What about DMs though? Yeah, I mean DMs are interesting, right? Because you have some people that you only communicate with on, on DM. DM. It's crazy, right? Even people that you have their number. Because there are the people that you don't even have their number. Yeah, you only talk only on DM. DM. It's so weird, right? But see, I'm still old. Like, even today, because I texted you and it didn't come up. Did you, I don't think you got it. I hit nah. you with a random yo. It didn't even get me delivered. So I was like, <laughs> it's been too long. So when I DM'd you, within like a minute, I send you my number. Because I'm old. Like, I'm just like, take my phone number. I don't, I don't yeah, want yeah, to like to, just. To, I got you. Not, not because there's anything wrong with it, but just because and if I'm in a pinch, I'm going to forget to DM. Like, I'm still, I'm old enough. That I'm gonna think like I gotta te- I gotta send a text. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that is interesting. But I would every time I think about the prospect of switching to a phone like that, immediately, like this shit is so in us that I have something that goes, no, you can't do that. You you how are you gonna promote all year? One of the producers on my album has no social media. Is it James Blake? Hell no. What James James, is, James has the some of the best social. Really? Commentary to me. Oh, really? Oh, maybe yeah. I should be following James. He's Blake. great. I didn't know much about him until I was looking. Up. I honestly ended up He's because great. James Blake has a, a. How many records do you produce on your album? Four. So because of that, I ended up on his Wikipedia page, and then so I'm just now going down the rabbit hole of James Blake. Mm-hmm. So wait, there's a producer on your album. Do I know the producer? Yeah. Uh, maybe his name is Dawood. He he produced the last track. Um, and he has no social. No. Uh, I met him when I when I worked with T minus and uh. We all had a session together in Toronto, and I was like, yo, bro, I did the, yo, bro, like, yo. He was like, I was like, what is that? I thought he didn't want me to give me his number. Like, he's like, nah, I'm going to give you my phone number. And I was like, oh, shit, that's cool. He was like, I don't have any social media, bro. And I was like, what? He was like, I don't have it on my phone. I don't have an account. You can't tag me anything. He's like, I just make beats, and his beats are fucking fantastic. So, yo, don't you admire it? I thought it was, I, I, I was a little jealous, bro. I was like, damn, I wish I had that power, you know, but. But here's the thing. We all trick ourselves in. Like, here's the ill thing. I think I got to be on social media. I got to promote my shit. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's someone else who's younger than me who's trying to get into media, who they're, all they have is, say, a podcast or YouTube channel, mm-hmm. and they feel like, oh, I need to promote all my shit. For sure. And they probably go, if I was Rosenberg and I was just on the radio all day, I wouldn't I even would have social media. Right. Mm-hmm. What the fuck do you need it for? I'm on I'm on old ass medium anyway. <laughs> uh, eight hours a day, I have a platform to talk. Do I really need? Dude. But here's the thing. In our bullshit world of needing to prove who we are to everyone, I need the social media world to see the clips of me doing radio. Right. So I look like I'm doing radio. Right. Even though that only gets X amount of impressions versus when I'm on the actual box in New York, way more people are hearing it, but they're but not, typing they're not typing it. Typing it's not, there's yeah. no proof of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like if you don't have a picture of it, then did it happen? Type exactly. It. Yeah. And then I'll see celebrities. Obviously, we, we got to get to some wrestling. Ooh. The, the Rock. Yo, my man never stops posting. Ever. Ever. I'm like, ever. wait, I'm like, what level does one have to <laughs> get to? Like if you're the Rock, bro. I want. I'm. I'm gonna ask him. I. I. I, I pray. I, I'm praying strong. I very much hope I run into him in Philadelphia for WrestleMania. Mm. And I do. If I get a moment, I'm like, ask you a question. I know the business purpose of it, like to some degree, but I could tell it's you. Like I could tell that is not your social media uh, manager. He wants to. He wants to talk. After no, all. you can tell it's yeah, Dwayne yeah, for sure. You could tell it's Dwayne for on sure. those messages, like yeah. for sure. And like um, Natalie follows uh, Courtney Cox and really enjoys her content. Okay, Courtney Cox was one of the fucking friends. All right, you were a fucking friend, literally, literally, <laughs> literally. Y'all are in a different category of TV. You never have to work again just from that. And she did mad other shit, like all the screen movies and mm-hmm. different. Yo, she's the only friend who was doing shit before Friends. That's a fact. She was on Family Ties she's when on, I was a kid. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. yeah, you watch old TV yeah, with your yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah, facts. She was like, she was mm-hmm. out here. That, she was in Dancing with the Dark by Bruce Springsteen. Damn. So she, oh, yo, damn, she did damn, her thing. Damn, damn, damn. Then she's the star of Friends, where they eventually get to what a, a million an episode or whatever it was, and their season will be like thirty episodes, yeah. a million each. Back then, Cashing out. Yeah. And then investing, doing what? Now, granted, I, I I don't want my wife to yell at me. Her content is very good. It's funny. 
mm-hmm. and well produced. And it's not like it's like everything she posts is basically a sketch. Okay. And I don't know. I'd have to ask her. I don't know how often she posts. I feel like it's not constant, but when she posts, not as it's often like, as The Rock. She ain't The Rock. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> She's not sipping a Terramana on a plane every <laughs> night, you know? But I still, it crossed my mind. I'm like, damn, if I was Courtney Cox. Would you? But I feel the need to do it, or maybe it's the opposite. And it's like she's bored. She's not doing shit all the time, and she still be. wants to perform for, could for be. people. It could be, bro. But I would love to never even think about it. To be that I person know. with me, oh, you can't follow me. Just how do we? What do we got to do to get to that point? I don't know. I mean, how much do you think you're honestly being really critical? How much do you think your social media legitimately drives people to your music at this point? I think it's so important. You do. I do. So being an indie artist, you think that like it is a very direct. I think if I wasn't if I wasn't a cult followed artist, it would hurt me a lot more. Um I think a lot of people with uh well, I can't compare what we have as flapper zombies to anybody else, really. Like maybe Tech Nine. Somebody like him. Um if he didn't have social media, I think he would be good. I think that his fans would find him. If with his tickets and it was an email, it had to be some other form of reaching out, but I don't think he needed social media to promote his new tour. Because at this point, if you're a strange music fan, you know what he's doing. I feel like Flabber Zombies, we have something similar, but that's not, I'm fortunate for that. But I, we've groomed that because of how much we care about our fans. But does it, for me, for my new shit, I needed social media for sure because... The Flappy Zombies fans are one fans, but you have fans of Meech Juice and Eric too, and um, well, and you guys you know, have the whole and it's Beast Coast, and it's all the Beast yeah, Coast it's, thing. It's, it's we all need like even what Joey's doing. Joey's in a completely different like he's a movie star. Like for him to just delete his social media at this point is like, did you see? He's gonna miss all the tea about him on this TV show that's going on every day. Well, no, now you know? he's in an interesting spot because his career shifted so much in other ways. When he drops an album, he needs to tell all the people who follow him right. that he dropped an album. For sure. You know? Mm-hmm. So it does sort of, it, it gets complicated when you're doing different things. But, like, realistically, like, bruh, when, I, when I'm about to do a kickoff show for one of the PLEs, do I really have to tell wrestling fans, yo, backlashes tonight? They know. They know. Yeah, they tapped in. And they're either watching the kickoff show or they're not. Oh, they're I not. mean, I yeah. really, maybe a tiny percentage goes, oh, shit, I forgot Rosenberg's going to be out. Like, maybe if you're like a real follower of mine, like you listen to my podcast and you really care. But even those people, mm-hmm. if they really fuck with me, they probably they already probably have really. that, that. They always turn on the kickoff show because they fuck with me. Yeah. So, like, I'm always a. That's let true. Let me tell people about WrestleMania coming yeah. up. Like, bro, That's true. That's true. it's going to get a billion impressions. Do they really. So I think we could get away from it. Now, obviously, I, I like the example you used of tech because you're staying in the realm of, like, very big, but not, like, Eminem, mm-hmm. right? Eminem doesn't need – he could delete his – Period. His, his, his social. Jay doesn't really use social. Mm-hmm. He has it at times, doesn't utilize it at all. You know, obviously, when you get to that stratosphere, mm-hmm. like, Billie Eilish doesn't have to post. It's actually one of the things that bugs me out about – doja cat so much mm. she just drives me fucking crazy with her social media i just <laughs> didn't she delete it recently she, like yesterday i heard but like yeah. doja is like like i said like i'm damaged mm. like doja in doja i see someone who's like worse off than me even and i'm like sis you're you're the shit bro like you mm. you literally can do everything you do not but the thing is, it's her world. You can't tell someone. It's hard, Don't bro. be interested. That's her life. That's where she's from. Yeah, it's hard, bro. You know? She's been doing this shit for a long time, too. So right, that's why, as Nori says, she was in racist chat room showing feet. Because it was her world. I'm not even, I'm not kink shaming, but it was, it was her world. <laughs> you can't get someone to be like, don't do chat rooms if that's literally kind of part of if how that's you... that's your shit, yeah, what do you... I mean, so it doesn't matter how much I tell you it's stupid, she's going to care, but I'm like, the shit keeps coming and biting you. You either mm. post something you shouldn't post, you wear something you shouldn't wear, someone hurts your feelings, you know, like, it's just a never-ending cycle, and meanwhile, it's like, she made it to that. Like, Doja is at... Mm. I think she's pretty much at the level of could delete everything. For sure, I when think When she so. drops, she drops. Her fans will be really upset if they're not yeah, exactly. upset already, though. Yeah, but that's the thing. She's going to upset them anyway. I feel mm-hmm. like it's a constant roller coaster. Meanwhile, 
she drops like straight up like rap records and they chart like pop records. Like she can literally do whatever she wants. It's mm-hmm. like, it's wild. It's, it's a wild. rare thing. It's a very, it's a strange <laughs> thing. Uh, let's, let's talk more about the album. I'm excited uh, for people to check it out. It's like, uh, it is not a Flatbush Zombies album. No. No, it is not. It no. is, it, it's like, it's, it's vibey. It's a very vibey. Would you, is that, is that safe to describe it that way? Okay. Like it's a it's a nice put it on and ride kind of album. Okay. I like um, that. I mean, it, I, it's how would you describe it sonically? I'm I'm, I'm going to play a little while we're talking. I'll play a little taste here, but yeah, I think honestly, I think it's the, the most diverse album I've heard this year so far. Um I haven't really like we said earlier, I don't really be checking to what people be doing. Right. So, so we'll take what you say at face value. So but. take it at face value, <laughs> but I don't think that you're going to really find that from somebody else's music, uh, being able to switch all the styles like that. You feel me? From psychedelic rock to um, almost folk with a breaking point. That song I have with Baby Rose and Rude Cat and Pale J to do Beef Patty with Boy Boy, which is dance hall. Then you got psychedelic hip hop shit with George, with uh, George Clinton. You yeah, know, how did you, how did you get the George Clinton record? Um, bro, I really manifested that. Like I was like, wow, I had written the song already, me and my boy, and I was just like, wow, we should get George Clinton on this. And he basically, somebody texted me or called me and said, yo, do you want to do a uh, photo shoot with George Clinton? Maybe a couple of weeks after we manifested that. Then I met him and I asked him if he wanted to be on my album. He was like, hell yeah. And he came off tour and did it. Wait, how'd you meet him? From a photo shoot. So at wait, what photo shoot? It was a market photo shoot the brand market and y'all were both in it mm-hmm. and was he familiar with you or you just got to kick it with him long enough where he felt you as a person i i i don't even know to this day you don't know no i don't know i feel like he just vibed with me that day we was we was vibing and i just told him i knew one of his uh somebody else he collaborated with him, my homie's black odyssey and i was like bro you did a record with my boy uh, I'm, I'm a fan like i have a spot for you on my album if you bless my album he was like yeah just like that a lot of you not. That's now listen, I, listen. I I can't be shocked because he came to the station once, and that is the energy he gives. Is thousand like percent. A, just a Jersey dude. Like it's it's. Yeah. He eighty two. He's eighty. Tapped in. He like yeah, Griselda. Nah. Yeah, he said Griselda. The song he's on with has Benny on it. So I was like, yeah, bro. When he, but he told me like. Yeah, because Griselda and I was like, oh, shit, excuse me. Nah. Like, damn, like, my pops is younger than him. He has no idea who the fuck West Side Gun is, all those people. My dad, younger than him, he's 82 years old. He knew what's going on, you know? And I, I mean, at that time, he agreed to it without hearing the record, but he easily could have been like, yo, nah, I'm good. But by the time I sent it to him, he was like, I dig it, and I got you. So that's how it came to be. Balls, we just raised the fee. Skated on the ops with the trip. We just raised supreme flat the shoulder. Did you write for him or you just told him to go out and do what he wanted to do? I, we sent him a reference of what, what we wanted him to do. It was like a 16 bar part. So at the end of the second verse, there's like that open space. We just wrote something we thought we thought you would say. And that's what he sent. We sent it and he sent me back a verse of the whole song. I, we didn't even ask him to do that. He was like, I was feeling it. So I did a whole like dub over the whole song. Like ad libs and all those little like interesting atmospheric parts and shit, you know. Yeah, you must have bugged out. Bug the fuck out. Was that the craziest bug out in the album process for you? <sighs> that one, it's hard to top that, bro. Yeah, I, was um, say, I don't know how you, I don't even top that. It's hard to top that. Um, I would say working with Layla Hathaway was also, you know, she's she's pretty sick. She's incredible. She's an incredible person. Um, her and Donnie are like top, top, top for me. I think Donnie's my favorite vocalist of all time i mean so it's a, it's a reasonable uh just that lineage just to even be part of just to have my name associated with that family is a blessing to me and meeting her was incredible you know she i don't know seven or nine grammy nominations yeah no she's super talented i guess crazy incredible voice incredible person she was all into final fantasy and video games and shit 
She came to my crib like, yo, you a nerd? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm a nerd. She was like, me too. I was like, oh, shit. She was like, oh, she you thought, She thought you might have been like a cool rapper or something? Yeah, I'm like, I ain't no cool rapper, bro. I play Final Fantasy, bro. I'm like, yo, <laughs> oh, well. Like, she was like, nah, I'm totally into that. She had an Oculus and all this shit she was telling me about. <laughs> That's the last thing I thought we were going to talk about before making a song like that, you know? And all these songs were recorded in my living room. Really? Yeah. In, in Los Angeles? Where in Los Angeles are you? I can't tell you that. You won't even go. I'm on the, I'm on the east side. I'm on the east side. East side. East side. I don't want to find know where I live, bro. No, you know what? It's L.A. <laughs> Facts. L.A. Place the place that people go to get away from problems, but then somehow miraculously find problems. New ones, unfortunately. I mean, you're right, bro. There are a lot of different vibes on here, man. Yeah. The album came out just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, February 23rd. Six, five, six, seven, eight. Gotta slow it down, gotta change your fate. I see the God in everyone on the center stage. That's liberate, that's liberate. Time ticks by six, seven, eight, seven, eight. Gotta slow it down, gotta change your fate. Change your fate. See the God in everyone on the center stage. Center stage. That's liberate. That's liberate. Liberate. How you my family when your sister and your mammy ugly? Music had to grip on me like your own mama hugged it. I drowned in thought when I evolve of understanding that. I fly alone and my emotions brought a planet back. Shit, can't manage that. Big screen the mirror max. I was just a young had my soul tinted black. Just a young Bro, thank you, bro. No, no, no zombies on here. Nah. Nah. Not fuck on this fuck one. them. I'm with you, man. It's enough, <laughs> man. Sometimes you gotta leave these hanger honors behind. You know what I mean? Bro, the funniest shit that I've been seeing, people like, man. You don't fuck with them. I'm like, you want me to FaceTime me trying out and laugh? We both point at you and laugh you in your fucking face. But this idiot. is that's a forever. That's like I I I, on, um, I talked to Benny about the same thing with with his, his literal family. That's their literal, literal family, yeah. and it's still the same thing. It's crazy. People are sick though, and they create narratives that don't exist. And it's so funny to me because it's like. You think music is ever gonna separate me from my bet? These are we've known each other. I've known Meech that he's four years old. You think some rap shit is gonna what? See, that's the thing that's different. Let me explain the difference, guys. Like for example, me and Saif have always only barely gotten along. Our break, (laughs) if we ever like truly hate each other, (laughs) it's completely reasonable. (laughs) We were never friends before anything. Like we were friends now, and our friend, our being friends is catching up on this show. You know what I mean? And like we have a good time. We definitely have a real kinship and care. Yeah. You know, if like I stepped out on the balcony and, and accidentally flip, you know, all of a sudden Eric went crazy and gave me a straight Royal Rumble clothesline over the balcony. <laughs> I think Sife would be sad, but like it's different with these cats who are like literally friends since childhood. Yeah. You know I mean it's like Wu Tang. Facts. That's what like, I'm saying. Wu Tang never they have problems sometimes. Mm-hmm. I mean your case you guys even need haven't even had any public problems. There's no problem. Like, I mean, That's what I'm saying. Like in the case of Wu Tang, at least they have an occasional moment where one of them's kinda like, eh. Usually it's just like different periods of people being annoyed with Rizza, right? And, but by the way, <laughs> yeah. that was the intention. Yeah, he's the guy. Mm-hmm. Like, he's the one to be annoyed with. Mm-hmm. He made the decision, it's going to be me if y'all want to do it, but just know, it's going to be me. me. I'm Riz. Yeah. It's, it, it, shout to NSYNC. Shout out to the Riz. It's going to be me. <laughs> it's going to be me. But the Rizza is going to be that. <laughs> dude, have you Bobby guys... Digital. Have you guys done... Have you had a Wu-Tang or a Rizza? Yeah. Cool? What did we you did, do again? We did a three-pack, I believe. We did zombies and and Riz. and RZA. Yeah, I co-produced one of them that we put out. Um, Quentin Wait. Tarantino. We had a whole. Uh, each song was from a different director, so we had uh, Plug Addicts. I think that one was more Kubrick, and then we had Quentin Tarantino. Um, I don't know if I've heard this song. Yeah, it's a video too. Yeah, I s- yo, low key. This is like a sleep to me. It came out. Um, it, to me, records are always interesting when they come out. That's when people remember them. I feel like sometimes they don't have the biggest outreach. Uh, the initial um, people like getting it because we just said so much to, uh, social media, all that shit. But like, I feel like we're in a time now where people will dig and they can have a huge resurgence by tomorrow. Oh, yeah. People are like, yo, how do we sleep on this? You know? Yeah. 
mind, so many blessings. I'm in my four corner room, staring at candles, yeah, feeling like I'm dancing, dancing in, in the, the moonlight. I wear these sunglasses at night. So you, wait, you said you co produced this with Rizza? This one, yeah. How did that work? I mean, to be honest, as a producer, how, that is like the craziest nerd out of all time, bro. The thing is, Rizza is. And we, uh, so the, the two songs, we did videos for them too. So, um, you know, when we first worked with him, he was like, yo, <laughs> actually, funny story. The first time we ever met him, we did a Burton show. And um, Burton, the ski company. Yeah, the ski company. And he was, um, he was headlining and we opened for him. And um, I remember like he came into the green room and I knew I was going to be Riz that day. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, I, you have all these excited Fucking thought like, yo, what is it? What am I gonna say to him? He comes up and starts freestyling, bro. Some like super metaphysical, out of this world shit. Rizzo, blah 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 blah. And we was looking at him like, do we go now? Like, I'm not gonna cut him. Wait, wait, no. He just yeah. started going. Started rapping, bro, in the green room. Like, in and we were just like, yo, there's a picture of us hanging out. He had shades on his shit. And we were just like, I can't go after that. Like, you're Rizzo, bro. And he's just like, yo, go. He like go. Like y'all, y'all go. Like with some real old school hip hop shit. He was like testing you at all? Nah, I just was like showing just on love, some, bro. Let's have fun. Yeah, let's go. And I was like, bro, I did not expect that reaction. Like, cause I never met him. So I mean, I wouldn't say at that point we were like actual friends yet, you know. But did you force yourself to rap, or did y'all just stay silent? Nah, we didn't say shit. Y'all was <laughs> like, no. Nah. <laughs> at least I don't. Maybe Mitra Juice did, but I said nothing. I really don't remember that. I remember I said nothing. I know that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Years later, I mean, he reached out. We had worked on a bunch of stuff at his house. Um, we made so many tracks together um and then he reached out again some years later and was like yo um yo let's cook up this one of them we really liked and i want to make some new ones with you too we were like oh shit this is like i can't they remember if it's during covid we started this but it might have been like right after it or whatever the lockdown and um that particular track there's one more that we did um that we didn't put out and when he sent it to me i was like damn i feel like i could add to this but i don't want to like He's RZA, bro. Like, I don't I don't know. At this point, he called me architect. Yo, architect, you could do whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you sure? He's like, yo, whatever you hear, feel free. It's yours. And he sent me the stems, and I was like, cool. And I laid the drums, and I kind of arranged it and played with it. And he was like, I love what you did. We rapped on it, and we shot the video, and we put it out, you know? So, you know. You guys put this out, like, together? Yeah. This little EP? Yeah. All of this started from meeting at the show? Yep. What is it with you guys? People just like you? Bro, there's a lot of sleepers, bro. We got song with Metallica, too. I don't know if you know that one. I do not know that I, one. I produced that one, too. It's the Unforgiven. Um, the fuck? It was an album where they redid their greatest hits. And I, I think we were one of the only rappers on the entire album. How the album. fuck did that happen? Reached out. There it is, the Unforgiven. The Unforgiven. With DJ Scratch, also. DJ Scratch. Shout out DJ Scratch. What the fuck is your career? This is crazy. I'm everywhere, bro. That's why it's like a little of everything. Why not? Like anything sitting for a while, gon' rust. That's why I stand out. And while you climb the ladder, people got their hands out. Something you don't know about. The hustle got harder, had to move about the house. I was 16, hiding columns in my couch. But the seed gon' sprout, the elite don't doubt. And life ain't fair, that's why I'm speaking for you now. My reflection is a martyr zone. And God knows I be verbose. That's why my words always feel close. I've been protected, they want my essence. But I'm aggressive, they won't catch me. I get real stepped in, it's destined. Take a look at my expressions. I'm more fast. And invested in my message. I'm forgiving many still don't see the vision. If we all pump fake or who gon' really make decisions? Why? 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 Yeah, that's a sleeper, bro. For sure. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you did a what what else am I forgetting? What have you done any other major outside production that I'm forgetting about? I produced the intro of Joey Badass last album too. I don't, I don't know if I heard 2000. 
Um, uh, I also scored the Black Sheep and Jay Dilla documentary that came out last year. Oh, you did? Yeah. Wow, so you scored that? Mm-hmm. I didn't finish yet. It was, was it dope? Bro. The part I saw was really good. Crazy. I was in it, too. I, I, I was in it, yeah, but I don't... I, don't I, I didn't get to much of that part yet, but... um. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, so... I want everybody to know that uh, this Joey Badass song produced by Eric the Architect is featuring, reda- featuring Redacted. Yeah. I, I was waiting for you to say something. I knew he was going to say something. That's why I didn't say anything. Me. Ladies and gentlemen. That's why I didn't say anything. And I say New York City. I'd like to introduce to you. You know, survive. He is... So he the baddest motherfucker in town. I can take five years old, cause my shit is timeless. My core got my back, so I'm standing on my promise. Right. These only back by the labels, they yo spineless. I'm back by popular demand and so on that time. And I popped out. 2012, y'all wasn't outside then. Ten years later, tell me why y'all still, still hiding. Listen, I think that we've. I think we've made clear why you need to spend time with "I've Never Been Here Before" the Eric the Architect album. And maybe this will send you down the rabbit hole of all things Flatbush Zombies as well. Facts. Um, feel like feel like for a while we were like uh, inextricably connected. Mm-hmm. Like I was, you guys were like really like part of my regular spiel when I was like talking about rap at that time which which was was a lot it was like mm-hmm. you know Joey Bronson yeah zombies yeah we're like i probably my like number one hitters of that time in that 2012 2013 early um you one of the first people that really could see beyond and just be like you know yeah, still people writing shit like these people worship the devil, and I'm like, bruh. Oh yeah, cut I, that yeah, by the shit way, the fuck it's so out funny. I barely even, I barely even like got that. Like I uh, like, I was just like, Juice's grandma is a pastor. Like you think this guy is part of some fucking shit? Like I grew up in church. Me and Meech went to church together. <laughs> people go right to <laughs> devil stuff very quickly. It's so crazy to me. It's like people are just high and being weird, bro. It's not like that deep. And then there was like the association with the grave diggers and then we actually meet the RZA. So it was like, oh, of course. And then you got... Oh, it was the word zombie too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this, 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 it's also the voice. It's Meech's voice too. I feel like a lot of people associate him. Like he can't help how he sounds, bro. Like he's not channeling Lucifer. Like... <laughs> yeah, there, there are like... There are certain... People crazy. There are certain subjects in which uh black americans are often obviously not always often shockingly conservative Mm. and one is any mention of like things related to that shit zombie post-death yeah voodoo and shit they don't fuck with that shit and obviously it taps into various different cultural things depending on where the person's background is from but Mm. there's something there a lot of it just ties back into church shit right Mm -hmm. but yeah that word zombie probably yeah, scares scare people. a lot of people away i remember one of my homies steven was getting a haircut in miami and then he was like oh shit they playing your shit in this barbershop this is maybe like five years ago and i was like get hype you know you're like oh shit he's like yeah bro they rocking with it oh no it's going left <laughs> i'm like oh, what, 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 what? <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, wait what? No way. what? What's going on? He's like, oh nah, they're fully verifying that you guys worship Satan. Like, wait, like you, it was like a barber shop. Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, is they fucking with it? He's like, oh, one of the barbers said, oh yeah, they fuck with that the devil shit. And then and they were like, yeah, 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 word up, word up. Like that's the part I don't fuck with. I'm and like, that was it. And he just stopped. He's like, forget it, man. I'm sorry. I was like. Damn. Damn, bro. He ruined my whole hype. I was gassed, like, in a barbershop? Like, no, no, that's not that's not where you expected to be. It's, damn. It's one of the places that, like, I, over the years from being, like, the white guy at Hot 97 in our conversations, I've learned the places where I can sort of have fun and fuck with people. <laughs> and, like, these are among the areas where I'll be <laughs> like... Like, it's, it's, you know what it is? It's that in 90% of situations, my brain default is white people are less cool right that's that's how that's probably part of why i became a hip-hop person right it's like white people are not cool we don't dance well we're not cool in a lot of different ways but then there are like these certain ways when i can spot how black people are conservative and kind of square i have fun (laughs) 
So I'll be like, I'm like, y'all never watched any Rob Zombie movies? And they're like, I don't, I don't fuck with the devil. I'm like, I don't fuck with the devil either. But I saw the movie, The Devil's Rejects. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, they're like, no, nah, I don't fuck with none of that. No, no, it had yeah, the word yeah, devil in I'm it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. That's a fact. We don't fuck with that shit. No, yeah, we don't, I don't fuck, fuck with, with the devil. <laughs> don't fuck with I don't shit. fuck with zombies. <laughs> I, I'm like. <laughs> That's so funny, bro. It's so true. It's Especially been, Caribbean people. Like, oh, my no, no. father don't fuck with none of that shit. Well, by the way, that's more most of my conversations are here. Mm -hmm. So, mostly everyone has a Caribbean background. And then, that, yeah, there's all these you layers of like, that. nah. Yeah, duppy thing, that. Yeah. yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything's Babylon. Mm, and I'm, like, yeah, Babylon. I'm like, this isn't Babylon. This is <laughs> art. I'm like, the policeman outside, that's Babylon. Yeah. This is just so weird. People it's just to weird. distinguish it. It's like playing like Ouija boards and all that shit is too crazy. Like, it's like, it don't make. It's it don't it's unsettling and the thought of it is dangerous. You right, know, like right. don't even bring it up in my house. Like don't leave a hat on the bed because that's that's the double hat on the beds a thing. Yeah, because it's like who you like, who's that hat for? Who wearing that hat? Somebody gonna put that hat on? <laughs> Somebody that's not you gonna pick that hat up? Yo, I've never yeah, heard of some that. Shit, yo, what's always what's, make your bed what's, after you get up and shit? What's your family's background? Jamaican. All Jamaican. What about and meets Jamaican right? Mm -hmm. A juice. Juice is honorary Jamaican. <laughs> So yeah. he's, he's not Caribbean? I don't know. Ju I, you have How to do you not know? Because Juice, I don't know. I don't know. Juice is an anomaly, bro. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. Juice, Juice is Jamaican. That's, okay. that's it. But we're calling it. Yeah. Um, uh, how dialed in on wrestling are you these days? I'm more old school, bro. So, but you haven't, have you not checked in on what The Rock's been doing? Only the promo shit I see. Okay, but you watch yeah. the promos. Yeah, I watch You've the promos. You've seen what he's been doing, though. It's mm -hmm. been so fun, bro. Yeah. So you said earlier you've been watching some 80s shit? I've been watching uh, Survivor Series. I've been running through Survivor Series. Started at uh, the beginning? Started, like, early, like, 90. 90s, my, Dipperstein, my, my boy. Actually, I should totally introduce you to Dipperstein. He's my agent, one of my best friends, and lives in L.A. Okay. Um, on paper, you guys have zero in common, but you would just get along because he's a great guy. Okay. Um, but he Survivor Series 90s is his Yeah, it's so shit. good, bro. I yeah. wanted to like where like we had Edge. Uh, what the fuck? I watched The Rock's debut. That was fun. Oh, yeah. There you go. Um, we had Undertaker's debut, I believe. Uh, Undertaker debuted at, at Survivor Series. Yeah. We had um, the weird one where it was like uh, Shawn Michaels with the Knights. That was weird as fuck. Oh that was yeah, weird. yeah, that was so. Yo, weird. they get to some funky teams there. <laughs> it's weird. Did you already you already saw the the hearts when all yeah, the heart siblings come out. out? Yeah, and it was like you were talking about his moms and shit. No, that, that was, was crazy. Yo, that was crazy. Yeah, when I shit. first when I first met Jerry Lawler, I was like. <laughs> Yo, I don't know how I feel about you, bro. You, <laughs> I was like, you talked about Helen and Stu, crazy, my guy. I don't know if Yo, you know, but some of us take this shit. serious. Yeah, that was shit was deep. that was really. And then as I got older. I had this, once I understood it a little more, I was like, oh, Brett's family, they really are about this wrestling shit. OB. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. They say whatever. Like, that's that's the beauty is when you realize, when you finally get to that point of, like, truly understanding. And, like, even with the Cody thing recently, did you follow the Cody thing at all with The Rock? Uh, not really. So, like, there was going to be... Cody and Roman and then it was going to be the rock and Roman okay and the Cody fans freaked out and so you know this is how it looks at least no one knows exactly what happened and then they went back and now it's going to be Cody Roman and when everyone was like buying into Cody being upset I was like guys I don't know if you understand this is this is I'm going to say, tell you the story for the second time in a day but I fucking love it uh I was at the Hall of Fame the year the Dudleys went in mm. And I uh, I walked past uh, Bubba Ray now now Bully Ray, and Bully I Ray. and I walked past. That's a bad motherfucker too. Mm -hmm. That's a real. That is a real life. Will you know? You just wouldn't want problems, kind of guy. Here, and, but really really cool guy. But anyways, I see him and I go. Um, I'm like, hey man, congratulations. And I stick out my hands. Serious congratulations. And he shakes my hand. And as he shakes, he goes, he goes, it's a fucking work, bro. <laughs> I was like, what? It's the, the Hall of Fame. It's the Hall of Fame. Bro. It's the Hall of Fame. He's like. <laughs> But he's right. Yeah, but like, he's like, no, but the Hall of Fame's a work. Yeah. It's all it's a, a work. Yeah. And like, now that doesn't mean he's not seriously honored by it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure now he probably wears his ring. He probably loves it. Mm -hmm. But there is this critical part that us as fans, no matter how much you know, I mean, you could be, I, I sit in the fucking locker room, bro. I get to be there. I am still ultimately still like, a fanboy. Mm -hmm. like you can't, you don't view it the way. Right. The, and not even all of them get it. Because in this era, mm -hmm. 
I won't name names. You could probably guess a lot of these kids, like when I say kids up to like 35 are marks too. Like they For really, sure. they, but the older ones, mm -hmm. their whole view of everything is like, you know, like people would get, you know, feel bad that our truth doesn't win or like, mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, he's on TV making jokes, getting yeah, paid. He doesn't, that's, you know, that all he cares about is the amount of time he I'm gets saying. on TV. Yeah, yeah. But they, it's hard for people to think of it that way. No, still. they're like, but what about wins and losses? I'm like, yo, bro, what the wins up, they're not fighting. What do you, what? I, I mean, I understand it's fun. <laughs> I mean, are we having a, if we're having a conversation like in fun, yeah, yes, then of course. Yeah, of course yeah. But wait, you think actually they're like fucking lost. I remember it happened. <laughs> they introduced a, a character a couple years ago and everyone's like, I can't believe he job to so-and-so tonight. And I'm like, I mean, it may not be ideal, but I guarantee you that's not the... It was his first night on Raw. I mm. guarantee you he's not upset about the loss. At all. He's celebrating that he he's was like, on Monday yeah, night. I was on Raw? <laughs> Fuck yeah, I'll take that shit. Yeah, of course. Um, hey, this has been a treat. Yeah. I think everyone Hell has yeah. enjoyed it thoroughly. Fuck yeah, I, think we I should, did. Yeah, I think we should, have you, we should have you back again. Easy. I mean, by the way, Syph very often is off doing comedy shows, and I need someone to just fill in. So <laughs> we can just... <laughs> You can just come in and shoot the shit. I'm down, bro. And it's so funny. I did an interview recently and, and uh, you know, afterwards, and this is not uncommon. Artists will be like, yo, man, I just, if we could, and, and promo people especially, got to make sure we hit all the talking points on the album. And I'm like, listen, the purpose of doing this is really just to hope that every time you do it, you grab a few more people. That's it. That's it. No one. So, okay. So the people who already know Eric, they don't need, they've already done the nerdy things to hear about the album. Mm -hmm. The bigger concern is the people who don't know about Eric and they don't want to hear details of the album. They haven't heard yet. They want to hear what makes you such a cool guy. For sure. And then they go, let Oh, me, let me check his shit out. Yeah. I, I fuck with this dude. I want to listen to his album. And exactly. then guess what? Then they're going to want to go learn all those things. So uh, I, I've had a lot of fun just getting to kick it with you. Um, and too, bro. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah, man. And, uh, thanks for always supporting us too. Like hey. I was saying, bro. Like you said, that time, especially when he was coming out, bro. It was just like Danny, Rocky, Bronson. I'll say LP, um, A Track. These are like the people that we were around all the time. Oh yeah. And we all came up together, you know. And it's it's really cool in 2024 to see most of those people, all those people, doing something else. You know, yeah. like music is definitely the catalyst of how they got there. But Bronson, I mean, come on, like wines and fucking olive food oils and, and all shows. shit, food and, and books. That's I, cool as fuck. No, nah, it's 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 amazing to think about the amount of come up that everybody had. Um, and you guys were always the easiest, the most available. Like, hey, we're going to do blank. Can you be here at blank? Whether it's a South by Showcase Facts. or a freestyle for my show or a, and not everyone got that. And I'm sure I told you guys that at the time. I, I, I hope if I didn't, I'll tell you now, I truly appreciate it because not everyone was easy all the time. Although most of beast coast was very on point. Um, most, um, the ones who weren't no, And actually most of them who weren't even apologized to me at some point were like, you were really trying to like throw us an alley oop. And I just wasn't catching the fucking ball. And I'm like, I, I tried my, listen, I'm glad they did. No, that most everyone did like everyone. It was a really cool, like blessed, fortunate time. And I think we can all agree that all of us are doing well, but none of us are doing as well as Rocky. Yo, <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Shout out ASAP Rocky. <laughs> Our guy, bro. Our guy. You're a hero, a hero Woo. to everyone. Um, no, it's a pleasure. Go check out the album, Eric, the architect. Thanks, bro. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man.